Well, welcome back to Galway. Joining me now is Robbie McNamara. Robbie, great to see you here in Galway. Is this your first day of the week? Uh, first day of racing, yeah. Um, came down yesterday. Um, it was late enough down, bad traffic, so I decided to give the race and a skip and uh, just went in went into town and got a bite to eat and uh, had a few drinks last night and uh, came here fresh today. You staying down for a couple of days? Uh, stay down last night and stay down tomorrow and I'll see you after that. Uh, bank holiday Monday, so I don't have to be back in Dunleary till Tuesday, so I'll make the most of the few days off. Yeah, and how's everything going in Dunleary, Rob? It's good, yeah. I um, got uh, permission to, to get off uh, today and tomorrow, so they were nice enough to do that. Uh, still working hard and getting on well and enjoying it there the whole time. And what's the routine there? A lot of physio and you're, you're working very hard there. Yeah, you're uh, you've early starts there. You'll be up seven, kind of half seven each morning and you're... Uh, you're on the go from about nine o'clock doing physio, and uh, you do a couple of couple of hours physio, and then you have occupational therapy, and you be in the gym then in the evening. But uh, you'd have um, basketball then the other day and stuff like that, so you're you're, you're kept busy and um, you'd, be, you'd be kept fit. And thankfully, you were very very fit as well, so that's obviously a big positive, isn't it? A big help to you. Yeah, it stood to me at the start. Um, it stood to me all along. Um, like I was quick enough getting over the the other injuries and. Uh, Kind of to get doing everyday stuff was uh, made a lot, a lot easier by that. Um, able to, to rest myself and getting in and out of a car, and uh, I was finding that very easy. And I was in there kind of uh, a week or two, and I was ahead of lads that were in there two months. And so, uh, fitness-wise, it stood to me, uh, stood to me big time. And I was reading, obviously, a very, very interesting interview in the Racing Post of the day, and it was, it was quite hard for you for a time, which is quite understandable. Yeah, it was. Um, Things were kind of rosy at the start. The, um, it was kind of messed over. I was on medication, and uh, reality hadn't set in. And then it, uh, it did, and uh, it was tough. But uh, I got on with it, and I got over it. And uh, it was either sit and wallow in it, or get on. And um, it's going to have to get over it at some stage. So uh, I didn't want to wallow in it. So I got on with it and got working, and um, kind of keep myself busy and keeping the mind occupied. Um, Keeping, keeping a lot better that way. And you've been going racing quite a bit. I've met you a few times at the races. We were in Cunningham's uh, Derby night. You were in good form there as well. And then you're out and about a lot. Yeah, I uh, went, to, went to the Derby. Uh, had a good day. I said I drank plenty of champagne and a good night in Cunningham's after. And I uh, went the following day racing as well. Uh, I was a bit shook, shook going racing the following day. Uh, but it has to be done as well. Um, I hadn't been out in a while. It, and it, three or four months locked up uh, I needed to, to get a bit of enjoyment and back to a bit of normality so um, that was that was good 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 for me and uh, got racing last week and uh, racing again today and it's nice to meet some old faces and um, you know, it's just nice nice to get out and about yeah, and you've been kept busy as well because you're doing work for racing the racing post an interesting article every day for the week of Galway yeah um, you tip him any winners are you? I uh, tipped a 10 to 1 winner yesterday. Good stuff. Yeah, it wasn't going great up to that. Uh, but uh, no, I enjoy it. Enjoy the writing. I'm doing a piece for the Irish Field every week as well on Saturday. And uh, uh, they seem to be going down fairly well. So um, I enjoy it and something something to, to do and uh, to pass the time. Um, you know, I've kind of done Leary there. You're finished at half four or five o'clock in the evening. So you've rested the day to yourself. So it's nice to um, put away there an hour each day to, to, to write a few bits. and. Uh, uh, Another thing to keep the mind occupied. Yeah, and how, how long more you're going to be in for? How long more is it that you're going to be in Dunleary? Uh, in Dunleary till September. Um, kind of, um, I've got another five or six weeks left to go, and I'm looking forward to. I, I enjoy I enjoy the everyday thing of uh, the exercise and uh, the routine and everything, but still looking forward to getting home. You know, it's it's five months. It'll be five months since I since I left home to go to Wexford and. Uh, you know, kind of, be, be nice to, to get home again after. Uh, uh, you, you don't expect to go racing, and, and it'll be another five months before you get home properly again. And Robbie, plans for the future. You've always wanted to train as long as I remember you coming up to Wells and the Curragh, going back a few years now. That was always the riding was a stepping stone for what you wanted to do later on, which was going to be a trainer. It was, yeah. Well, I never thought I'd be a jockey. Um, I was 15. I was playing rugby. I was about 12 stone. I was uh, small and fat, and I kind of, kind of get a growth spurt and got taller. And uh, I just said it, I'd be try and give the, the riding a go for a few years. But it was kind of like you said, only a stepping stone towards towards training. And I, I was lucky enough to kind of get going and went and rode out for 
Um, the likes of in Dermot Wells for eight and a half years, and I rode out in yards like Jessica Harrington's and Willie Mullins's, and um, you know, I was in a lot of the top stables and rode work for a lot of the, the top trainers. And you see what to do right, and you see plenty of stuff to do wrong. So um, I was always paying attention, and uh, you know, lads could be going in and. They could be in the same yards but not paying attention. Um, but I was going in every day and looking at what was going on and what he was doing. And, um, so kind of, I was always gearing myself towards it. Um, I'm not going to do it straight away. I'm going to get out of the hospital and um, try and get a house sorted. And, um, I'll probably aim for maybe the middle of next year and um, gear for heading, towards, head, head, heading to the sales in the, in the summer of next year and um, giving it a kick after that. But I'd like to get out of Dunleary and go on holidays and um, relax for a while. And, um, can I get, get back into an all routine before I get the, get the pressure of training back laid down on top of me? Fair pressure as well. I know, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get things in order before uh, I'll have everything organised for by the time I go training. I'll have the yard set up and staff organised, and I know I'll have a house myself, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have everything organised properly before I go at it. And you were saying there, reading, going back to your article again in, in the Racing Post on Sunday, that the Cora is the place you'd like to start off. It is. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to give the training a go, but if in two years' time, if it wasn't working out, I'd pull the plug in it. I'm not going to, not going to go, go run myself into the ground training bad horses. So I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go, and I'd be very disappointed if it didn't work out. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to go chasing up a tree with, uh, with gaining nothing from it. So I'll go to the corral, I'll, I'll rent the yard. Um, I'm not going to invest fortunes in it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll rent the yard rather than buying and building a huge place. Um, so I'll, I'll rent the yard in the Curra, but uh, uh, you've got every amenity there. You know, it's the, the best training facilities in the country, and uh, it'd be a bit silly not to take advantage of it. You know it so well now at this stage, eight and a half years in Wells. Jessica Harrington obviously brings a lot of horses over to work on the Curra and school in the Curra as well, and you know every blade of grass there. Yeah, I do, yeah. I know it's not like the back of my hand. Um, like I said, I know, I know every is. Ten different gallops there. I've ridden work on every single one of them. I know them. Uh, uh, I, I know the. I think the most important thing about a gallop is no matter what sort of gallop is, is you've got to know how to use it. And uh, like you could have a two furlong round gallop, and you can train winners round it as long as you train the right way. Um, so I, I just I know the curve well, and I know I know how to. I've seen how you train winners off it. So uh, you know I'll take a lot of those things from from the trainers I've seen. Um, so. Seen Derm Royal train Melbourne Cup winners and Derby winners and Jessica Heron train Champion Hurdle winners and so uh, I've seen seen how they do it so uh, if I follow their lead I won't be going too far on. And Robbie, have you a preference or will it be dual purpose? Have you a preference for flat or jump? No, I'd like to if I if I got going down the line I'd like to go um, dual purpose. Uh, I've, uh, uh, my heart is in, in jump racing but uh, I, I love I'd love to to, to dabble, dabble into um, few flat horses as well but I'd like to start off I'd like to go to the sales and get a bunch of three-year-olds and uh, start off that way um, it's kind of I'd, li I'd like to start off and have having fed 10 or 11 horses and ha have a routine kind of similar for the whole lot of them be a lot easier rather than than working on six furlong two-year-olds and a mile and a half three-year-old and five three milers and so I'd li like to start off with one bunch and get going and get into a routine and uh, you kind of once you've it up and going, it'll be a lot easier to, to bring in a few two-year-olds or something like that. A blank canvas as well, too, when you're buying those three-year-olds. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So you've, uh, they have no bad habits when you get them, so you're the one to give them the bad habits. Uh, but uh, no, I'll, I'll, uh, if someone offered me a two-year-old, I'd be glad to take him. But at the same time, if, uh, if someone gave me, if, if I got an order for a horse to be ideally for a, 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 an unbroken three-year-old and um, teach him his ways, and um, like this, this is. Uh, there's something nice about uh, teaching a horse everything, everything he knows, and uh, I'd like to do it nice and patiently. And uh, uh, you know, I've, uh, I did it last year. I uh, got eight or nine horses from the sales and broke all of them, and they went uh, they went on to Shane Dunne, who's went point to point, and uh, they 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 all did fairly well, and a lot of them were sold on to, to English trainers, so that went fairly well. So um, I enjoy doing that, and I'd, li I'd like to start off doing something similar. Obviously, keeping myself to, to go racing. Then. So, and Robbie, you were back in the horse last week, or the week before. What was that like? Uh, writing as bad as ever. <laughs> um, no, it was nice. Uh, I just kind of did it out of uh, just to prove myself I could, I, I could do it. Um, I said, said, I mentioned it to, I think it was my mother, and she kind of laughed at me. She wouldn't believe me. So it was kind of out of that reaction that, that it kind of spurred me on to, to go and do it, just to, to prove to other people that I could and prove to myself that I could. And 
No, I enjoyed it. Uh, didn't do much, just had a, a walk around. Um, but I uh, was on lead round for a while, and that, that brought me back to my four or five all days. Uh, but got going towards the end and was doing figure of eights and everything towards the end of it and had a lot more control than I thought it would and balance was very good. Um, so I've a lot of I'm lucky of uh, the use of all my abdominals and my core and everything. So got a lot of balance from that. So uh, originally when I got to fall, it was from kind of my belly button down. Um, but later on, kind of a few weeks after the, when the numbness wore off, um, it kind of it settled down to, to my groin area. Um, so I've, I'm lucky to have that makes a huge difference uh, in everyday life. But uh, it made a huge difference riding as well. And uh, no, I'll go back. I'll go back next Tuesday. I think I'm going back and. Uh, I'll give the Trotton a go and try and go canter in the week after. And, uh, I'll, uh, if that goes well, I try and try and have a, have a jump on the days. Well, was it emotional? It must have been first time back in art. Not really. Um, no, people are asking me was I nervous or anything. But kind of riding in the Grand National and you're riding chases every day. If you're going back and getting nervous and on an equestrian pony, you're in a bit of trouble. Uh, no, I wasn't one bit nervous or. I was kind of. I went to Mygler the week before, and I met Forgotten Rules, and I hadn't, I hadn't met a horse, and I'd been racing, but I hadn't encountered a, a horse in um, two or three months, and he uh, he was very friendly towards me. And that was that was a little emotional to, to get to get that feeling back. But uh, you know, the other day it was nice. It was uh, I was kind of uh, I was kind of more head on at it the other day rather than uh, more more be, more being in it. Uh, I was kind of just going head on, and I was going to do it, and that was it. And uh, there was no real emotion. It was just, it was just I was going to do it, and that was it. So. Good stuff. Come back to the action today. Give us a winner for today, Rob, or a winner for the rest of the week. You're studying the form inside out. Yeah, first figure runs in the, the bumper on Saturday. Uh, two good runs in bumpers for Dermot Well and. The, the, himself and Finney Maguire the a winner yesterday in the amateur maiden. He'll uh, he'll take a lot of beating at the weekend, and uh, I fancy I fancy hidden cyclone in the in the, the Galway hurdle today. He's in off 137. Brain Hayes claims three off him. He's running off 10-2. He's he's a very classy horse. Like people are saying that uh, going back over hurdles and would he be able to lie up? But he like he made a run in the champion chase. I guarantee you, you throw half the field in the champion chase, wouldn't be able to lie up on it. You know he's coming back. He's a 160 rated, rated chaser, he's coming back over hurdles. Um, I think uh, jumping fences inconvenienced him. He was big and awkward and he was... Uh, they, were, they were an effort to him. Uh, he'll be going a lot quicker today over hurdles and uh, he won't have as much time to think. I think he's his own worst enemy. Uh, he's a bit ignorant and uh, doesn't do himself favours, so he won't have much time to think and it might, might be the best thing for him today. Uh, he'll, he'll, I think he'll run a big race. Thanks for having a word, Rob, and catch up with you again soon. No bother. Cheers, Kev. Thanks very much.